Praise the Lord. Come on in and let's just get into the Word of God. And let's just see what He has to say to us this week. Praise the Lord. He's been so good to us. Let's just go to Him in prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, we ask you, Lord, to just give us wisdom and understanding of your Word. Prepare our hearts, Lord, to be good ground for the Word to fall into and spring forth and bring forth good fruit, that we may be a good disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You know, to be a disciple, it means that we are we adhere to the teaching of someone, okay? Whoever we are following and whoever we are imitating, whoever that we are uh, imitating their actions, speaking the same things that they do, that's discipleship, amen? We adhere to their, to their teachings, and then we go forth and teach others. So if we're a disciple of Jesus, we're learning of him, we're learning of his word, we're learning what he does and what he did. He came to do the will of the Father. Hallelujah. So let's be good disciples. Let's follow Jesus. Let's be an imitator. Let's adhere to his word and speak his word. Do his will. In the book of Mark, the 16th chapter, he says like this. He was giving instructions to his disciples. And he said this, Go ye into all the world. And preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. But he that believeth not shall be damned. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents. And if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. So then after the Lord had spoken unto him, he, he was received up into heaven and sat at the right hand of God. And they went forth and preached everywhere, the Lord working with them and confirming the word with signs following. Amen. People say, well, he was just talking to them. He's talking to us today. His word is life. He is the word. He is speaking to us today. So what are we doing? He said unto his disciples, he said, the harvest is plenteous, but the laborers are few. Pray. Ye therefore, the Lord of the harvest, that he will send forth laborers into the harvest. The harvest is truly is great. And the laborers are few. We're making excuses. We don't want to do anything. We want to sit in our lazy boy and just take it easy. We've got born again, been forgiven of our sins. So we're just going to take it easy till the Lord comes and takes us on to heaven. That's the attitude of a lot of people. They're not thinking of others. You know, Jesus gave his life for us. He gave his everything for us. So we could have his all. Hallelujah. Jesus said this. He said, I must work the works of him that sent me. While it is day, the night cometh when no man can work. See, he already did his part. He said on the cross, he said, it is finished. He finished the plan of salvation. He finished the plan of the healing for our bodies and our minds and our spirits. Hallelujah. 
What a wonderful Savior. And why don't we want to go and be more like Him? Why don't we want to be an imitator of Him? If we're going to be a disciple of His, we're going to have to go forth and do like He said, go preach His gospel unto every creature. You say, well, I'm not a preacher. Hmm. We're all ministers. Think about it. We are to speak His word. Whether it's testimonies, whether it is singing, whether it is preaching, whether it is leading someone to Christ. You don't have to be a preacher to lead someone to Jesus. Think about it. People say, well, hmm, I didn't know that. Well, the Bible says, my word is not even in thy mouth. If thou believe in thy heart and confess with thy mouth unto salvation, thou shalt be saved. Hmm. Every born-again Christian should be able to lead someone to Christ. They should be able to tell them how to be saved. But we want to use excuses. See, there was a man that made a great supper one time. And he sent his servant out to bid him to come because the supper was almost ready. I believe the supper of the marriage of the Lamb is almost ready. And he's saying, come. But he sent his servant out and he says, come, all things are now ready. But they all began to make excuses. I bought a piece of land and I must go see it. Have me excused. I bought some oxen and I must go prove them. Another says, I've married a wife and I can't go. We've all got excuses. If we're going to be a disciple of Christ, we got to get rid of the excuses. When we stand before God, there's not going to be no excuses. None whatsoever. So let's repent. Lord, forgive me for being negligent. Lord, forgive me for procrastinating. Forgive me, Lord, for being so lazy. It's time to wake up. It's time to get up. It's time to stand up. And face what we need need to do praise God it's time to rise up it's time to stir up that gift that is within us that God has placed in every person you say well I don't know what my gift is hmm. read the word of God and pray and you'll find out let's stir up that gift that is within us it may be to go pray for people. It may be to lay hands on people. It may be to preach. It may be to sing. It may be to testify. It may be to just to intercede in prayer for people. We need intercessors. Amen? It's time to study the Word of God. He says, Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needs not to be ashamed Rightly dividing the word of truth. And if there's something standing in your way keeping you from reading the word, you need to get rid of it. He said, lay aside every sin and weight that so easily beset us. So we can run the race with patience. So that we can run w without tiring, without getting weary. He said, not to be get weary in well-doing. Because when you're doing it for Jesus, 
when you're doing it for the kingdom of God. <laughs> Whoo, hallelujah. Oh, I tell you the joy that you can feel inside of you. It's time to clean up that old globe and let our light shine bright. It's time that we rise up and be the soldier in the army of God that we're supposed to be. It's time to quit putting off things. It's time to quit being lazy. It's time to quit procrastinating. It's time to put on the whole armor of God. You hear me? We've got to have that whole armor of God on us. In Ephesians, the sixth chapter, he says, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. We're not fighting against people. We've got to understand it's the enemy using people. Can we be used by the enemy? Yes, we can, if we're not careful. That's why we've got to be careful what goes in our ears, what goes in our eyes, what comes out of our mouth. Because, see, our tongue sets the very course of our life. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. Huh? Yeah. He said, wherefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. Mm. We're in the evil days. We're fighting against the principalities and the powers of the air. He said, stand, therefore having your loins girded about with truth and having the breastplate of righteousness. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man come unto the Father except by me, he said. He said, and having your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. And above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one. Mm, you got to have that faith shield up there. Mm, hallelujah. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, and watching thereunto with all per perseverance and supplications for all the saints. We've got to be prepared. See, we've got to be more like Jesus. Amen. When we do this, we're going to send to a higher place in the Lord and stand before him and with him. Hold on. Position yourself for our greater anointing. The anointing to win souls. That's what I want. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. He said this in Proverbs 11, 30, said, The fruit of the righteous is a tree of life, and he that winneth souls is wise. You know, the enemy wants us to quit. He wants us to give up. He sends discouragement. That's his biggest tool that he wants to use on God's people is discouragement. Where they want to just give up when things are not going the way we think they should. We just want to give up sometimes. But listen, God never gets weary. He never gets tired. So his life that's in us Let's not get weary in well-doing. Amen. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Rest in him. Let's not get weary. Let's not start giving excuses. You know, when God told Moses to go down there in Egypt and bring the children of Israel out, he started making excuses and he said, Lord, I'm not eloquent. And I'm slow of speech and slow of tongue. And the Lord said, Who hath made man's mouth? Or who maketh the dumb, or deaf, or the seeing, or the blind? Have not I the Lord? Now therefore go, and I will be with thy mouth, 
and teach thee what thou shalt say. So Moses said, O Lord, send, I pray thee, by the hand of him whom thou wilt send. See, God will send us help in time of need. He will send us supplies in time of need. He will send whatever we need at the time we need. So we trust. We have faith in God. Amen. Because he said that he would go with us all the way, even unto the end. Amen. I want to be like Isaiah. He said, he heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send? And who will go for us? Then Isaiah said, Here am I. Send me. Let's be a volunteer. You say, I don't have time. You have more time than you do anything else. But time is winding down. It's winding down and our loved ones are needing to hear the word of God. Our loved ones are needing instructions on how to become a child of God. They're needing instructions on how to be healed, soul, body, and spirit. But we want to use excuses. Well, I can't speak well. I don't, I don't have the time. I don't have the means to do this. Or I don't have the means to do that. But we're wasting time when we do that. Say, Lord, send me. And when the Lord sends you, he will equip you. Amen? He will give you the very words to say. He will give you the very things to do. He will strengthen you. He will sustain you. He will go with you. Praise God. We're serving a God that don't leave us out there in left field somewhere. Our loved ones are needing help. The whole world needs our help. Are we praying? Are we being an encourager? Are we showing people the way? Are we studying the word where we can show people the way? Or do we just lay our Bibles up on a shelf somewhere and just take it down when we go to church? Uh-oh. Because Jesus said, Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. But he that doeth the will of my Father, which is in heaven. He said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Except you be converted and become as little children, you shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. Mm. It's time, people, to wake up. It's time to rise up and shine and let our light shine before the lost and dying world. This world of darkness. People are blinded. Let's pray that God will open our eyes. Pray that God will help us to have more zeal more ambitious to go forth and tell them about Jesus. You say, well, they won't hear me. Well, you know, Jesus had the same problem. Some will hear and some won't. But see, when we go forth and we give out the word, then their blood's not on our hands anymore. But if Jesus sends us and we don't go and they don't repent, then their blood is required at our hands. 
So we need to purpose in our heart that we're going to follow all the instructions that Jesus gave us. Going to all the world and preach his gospel unto every creature. Lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Baptizing them. Jesus sent us forth. Again, I say people say, well, they, he was talking to those that was following him at the time. Well, are you following him today? His word is still just as true today as it was back then. I want that testimony that Enoch had. He had the testimony that he pleased God. Amen. I want to be able to when he calls my name and I stand before him that it says, well done, good and faithful servant that's been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of the Lord. That's my heart's desire. That's what I'm pressing forward. That's why I want to see all my loved ones come in and be saved before it's everlasting too late. You say, well, people reject me. People hurt me. Oh, let's talk about hurt. <laughs> yes. Jesus was hurt. I've been hurt. I've been hurt by people that I've loved so much. And I still love them. But you know, that don't get cause me to quit doing what God tells me to do. I've shed many a tear. But God has dried my tears. My heart has broken many times because of what's been said or been made fun of. But I still love them, and I pray for them. You know, there's no weapon formed against me that'll prosper. There's no weapon formed against love. It's going to prosper. Because I know in whom I put my trust. Jesus went about doing good. He went about loving everybody. And yes, I love those that, that have come against me. Am I wanting to cry about it? No. It hurts me that eyes are not opened. But it's not going to stop me. And we need to have that determination that we're going to follow Jesus. That we're going to be discipled by him. We're going to adhere to his teaching. We're going to obey his teaching. We need to have that so hard set in us that the enemy cannot even make it pale at any time. God has sent us all forth. He sent us all forth. He said we're not saved by our works, but we're saved unto good works. See, when I came to the Lord, my want to changed. Those things that I loved before, I hated. And those things that I hated before, I loved. My whole attitude changed. See, all the former things has passed away. I became a new creature. And you can too. We can all become a new creature in Christ by growing up closer to Him, being obedient to Him, and doing what he has commissioned us to do. And that's to go forth 
and preach his gospel. It's to go forth and lay hands on the sick. It's for us to go forth and tell the lost and dying world, warn them of the dangers that's coming ahead. Now, if you knew there's a bridge out up uh, down the road somewhere, it was out, and there's cars going down through there so fast, wouldn't you want to warn them? Well, children, hell is hot. And whenever you go there, you're not coming out. It's a lake of fire that burns forever and ever. The fire is not quenched. So let's go forth and warn them. Don't make no difference what the world says. Don't make no difference what the naysayer says. Let's be obedient to Christ. Let's adhere to his teaching. Let's be obedient to his teaching. Let's quit procrastinating. And let God, let God be God in our life. Amen. The fruit of the righteous is a tree of life. And he that winneth souls is wise. But see, when we don't do as the word says, we don't go forth teaching. We don't go forth instructing people how to be saved. Our walk doesn't jive with our talk. Then we could be a stumbling block. Amen? When we get so religious that we think that we know it all, it's that religious spirit. But our walk doesn't line up with our talk. Then we're just standing in the doorway hindering sinners from coming in, being born into the kingdom of God. Let's let our light shine. He said, no man light a candle and put it under a bushel. Let's let it shine so bright. He said, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and turn and glorify the Father which is in heaven. Let's be a soul winner. Let's let, lead people to Christ. Let's lead our loved ones into the kingdom of God. Let's let our light be so bright that they can see our good works. Let our talk and our walk be the same. Amen. The harvest is ripe. The harvest is plentiful. But what are the workers? What are we doing? Let's quit procrastinating. And let's quit thinking about what others will think about us. Because that don't matter come judgment day. It won't matter. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. But let's go forth, winning souls into the kingdom. Let's go forth and do what Jesus told the disciples. He said, go forth and lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. Hallelujah. Casting out the devils. Amen. They shall speak with new tongues. My speech is not like it was before I came to the Lord. Hmm? It shouldn't be. It should not be the same, hallelujah, because we're a new creature. Old things have passed away. All things become new, praise the Lord. Oh, I'm so glad that you joined us today, and I, I pray that you've got something out of this. Let's just rise up and be what God tells us to do. Let's rise up and not think about what other people think about us, hallelujah. Let's go forth and be disciples of Jesus that he told us to be. Hallelujah. This is Evangelist Lucy Lowe, Post Office Box 133, Grimsley, Tennessee, G-R-I-M-S-L-E-Y, Tennessee, 38565. Email is lucylowe1944 at gmail.com. And I would just love to hear from you. Amen. Hallelujah. God bless you, Betty. God 
is speaking to you. Listen to him. Amen. Praise the Lord. Until next time, God bless you. We love you, and Jesus loves you even more.